This is my favorite place to get my hair cut. However, I don't like taking time to get my hair cut. One of the things I want you to do is come on in here and meet my friend. He owns this shop. It's got quite the vibe. What's up, brother? What's up, rookie? My man. As we enter in this first sermon of 2021, I believe at the end of 2021, you're gonna W-O-N, one, right? Yep. And so what we need to do is to take time to do certain things. Hey, listen, the first time I came in here was because somebody told me that this barbershop was playing my YouTube videos. And I'm like, what? I got to go check out that, 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 that place and see what's going on. This guy's saved, sanctified, awesome man of God. But he has a business and it was hard. During Corona, when he couldn't cut my hair, we talked about it because he was going through a struggle. He worked so hard for six years to start the business and then this hit. And during that time, the guy who owns the building, understandably so, he still needed the rent money, so he made him pay. He's like, I can't pay, I don't have the money. It's not a good accent, but- It's hard. It's hard. Yeah. But you had to keep paying the bill. Yeah. So he stayed with it because his goal was so big. He knows what he wants to do. He knows the environment he wants to create. So he made it through 2020, and now we're entering into 2021, which I think is W-O-N, He's going to win. He's going to look back at the end of 21 and say, I won in 2021. And so that's one of the things that I think it's important for you to do is to focus on not what you're going through, but what you're going to. God gave you that business to bless people. And so it's a good way for people to go, hey, what are you watching? And then he gets people saved all the time. And when I come in here, he always makes me gather around and pray with a bunch of people. You know what's They're customers. Funny. One day, one guy has come to, to display it. And I don't, I don't know because I put this video right there, and people see right there and they can read. They can read, yeah. So the close caption. Like, like the music part. Right. People can read. And one day somebody come, and they say, "Andre, can you pray for me?" I said, wow. "Why?" Because everything, everything the TV said. Oh wow. Changed my life. Wow. And I'm Amazing. like, what? Yeah. Yeah, the TV, you put a one message right there, and I, and I read everything that everything you said. Yeah. That changed my life. Wow. Everybody pray, even if they're not saved. <laughs> I like this new guy. Well, if you guys are unfamiliar, uh, the owner of this barbershop likes to pray. I'm a pastor, so. Father, we just come to you in the name of Jesus, God. We thank you for this shop. God, we thank you for 2020 that we all made it. We're sitting here, God, getting ready to enter into 2021 with new goals and aspirations like never before. God, I bless this shop that, you know, they would just honor God with people that are just maybe even have opposing views or different thoughts. They say, hey, no, this is this is our shop and we dedicate it to God. And God, I bless this shop in 2021. At the end of 2021, they'll look back and say, we won. God, I bless every person here that they don't know me, I don't know them, but God, I know you have plans for their life and you created them for a specific calling and a unique gifting. God, I pray for everyone watching on television around the world at all of our campuses today, God, to be blessed and they will receive the anointing that's on this prayer. And God, someday they'll own their own business so they can pray when they wanna pray. God, bring prayer back to schools, bring back to government. God, bring we want Jesus in every part of our lives. And God, we know things go better with God. And God, 2021 will be full of blessing, favor, breakthrough, and supernatural opportunity. And God, also give me arms the size of Chino. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Good to meet you, man. Likewise. Bless you, buddy. Love Appreciate you, pal. It. All right, that's fun. That's the way you do it. You know, I get my hair cut in there every time. and. Always try to witness to people, share your faith, be as bold as he is. Come on, we're called to be bold warriors for Jesus and tell everybody everywhere about the local church, about God. Hang on a minute, look at this. why we've used that is because it's worldly free because the Asley brothers go to our church. Can I get a man? Cut. I love that story. Don't you all love that story of how he put his faith on display and, and of course getting that trimming, that haircut. Look at your neighbor and say you need a fresh cut. 
we really want to kind of talk about that. I have a prophetic word for you at all campuses today, even in the overflow there. I see you in Florida right now. St. Louis, turn around, see him in Florida. There's that room and the overflow room. Give it up one more time for RPC and that campus. Come on, you guys are going to have to clap better than that. My gosh, there's a lot of people in here. So there's a scripture, we know that in Luke chapter 15, it says, I'm the vine, the true vine. The father is, is the vineyard keeper and he removes any branches that doesn't produce fruit and he trims it. He takes the trimmer to it so that it can produce more fruit. He, he trims it because as a person of faith, we need to be growing from faith to faith, glory to glory, victory to victory. And so God will trim you on stuff. He, he'll tell you things that you need to know uh, before you actually know, don't, you don't know that you need to trim that thing in your life until the Holy Spirit speaks to you. But how many of y'all have had God speak to you something? Maybe you're a new believer, so you don't know if it's God or not, but have you ever heard inside, like you're talking too much, uh, you, be nice, anybody, come on, raise your hands, all campuses. Anybody ever heard even go to church? That wasn't the devil that told you to go to church. That was God. Um, I think that in the backstage, is my, they have my phone, but I just got a text uh, before I went on stage from a guy who's in a federal penitentiary uh, in Texarkana, Texas. And you might be wondering, how would you get a text from people that are in prison? You can get anything in prison. Come on, somebody understand this. You, you're, some of you don't think I'm talking for real, for real. In fact, there was another guy who's at our church in Florida who just got a prison. He was in the phone business in prison. Can you imagine this? You can get drugs, you can get anything. Prison is amazing, but that's a whole other sermon. And I'm trying to convince you that it's real, for real. Like, it's not a joke. And a minute ago, he said, Pastor PD, thanks so much for praying for me because I just found out that the guy who prosecuted me, they got him on a bunch of other stuff and there's a chance I can get out of here before 2034. And uh, there's one lady that her mom's in prison. She's like, whoa. No. Uh, and, and so that's good news to him. Now here's, here's my text back. My text back to him, I said his name and I said, I just want you to remember this. I kept trying to tell you in St. Louis, sit down in the chair and let God trim you. But there was so much favor and so much grace on his life. And I can't even say that this was because he went to church. It was just that God had a supernatural favor on this dude. It's like every time I turned around, this guy was on Jimmy John's yacht. He was on that other dude's yacht. He was like in these private planes. Like this guy had so much favor on his life, it was unreal. But he got so busy, he couldn't listen to, I am the true vine. You, you're the vine and I, I, I'm the vine dresser and I wanna trim you. But he said, I'm too busy to go to church. And so I texted him in prison a minute ago. And I said, I just need you to, if you'll listen to me, there is a chance you can get out while your kids are still, you know, seven, eight, nine years old right now. And they're growing, there's a chance you can see them walk down the aisle, but there's only one way that you can do this. Basically, you've got to sit down in this chair and allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you. And he said, forsake not the assemblies of yourself together. And when the evil day approaches, do it all, all the more. So I asked him the question, if God would do a miracle and get you out, would you always go to the lake? Would you always go to the racetrack? Would you always say, well, my life is so great. Or, or wait, do you have the brains? Do you have the wherewithal to understand that God's the true vine dresser and he wants to take the pruners to you? Somebody ought to shout amen. This is the word for 2021. I'm coming at you hot today because I need you to know the rest of this year can be a supernatural breakthrough. You can win in 2021. You can look back and say, I won in 21, but you got to sit down for the trimming. Somebody shout, you got to sit down for the trimming. Florida, I'm missing you right now for two reasons. One, you guys shout like maniacs. And two, it's 28 degrees and snow in here. Can I get an amen? <laughs> there, there's one other passage I want to view before we get to the main text tonight. And it's in Matthew 25. If you're a note taker, write that down. Matthew 25, and you're familiar with this because God spoke this to us about 21. God spoke to me that there were five foolish virgins and five wise virgins. I was walking on the beach in Florida and the Lord spoke to me and said, in the last five minutes of this walk on the beach, I'm gonna to talk to you about the next five years. 21, 22, 23, 24, and 25. And he said, there's going to be five foolish virgins and five wise virgins. And, and this wasn't, please listen to me, this wasn't the world versus the church. This wasn't 
the church versus, you know, uh, people that are not familiar with the word of God. This was a difference. They're all virgins. This was a difference in the local church. When I say local church, I mean the capital C church around the world. And we have a global church, by the way. We're, we're on in all of Europe, in all of Africa. This will be broadcast on Sunday morning globally. Get it up for the Faith Network, Victory Network. Come on, give God good praise this weekend. So, so I, I need you to understand this. In, verse, in, in this chapter 25, verse 2, it says, Five of them were foolish, thoughtless, silly, and careless. And five were wise, farsighted, practical and sensible. For when the foolish took the lamps, they did not take extra oil, but the wise took flask of oil. Oil is a type of the Holy Spirit. Shout it with me at all campuses. What is that? Oil is a type of the Holy Spirit. One more time, shout it at home. What? Verse seven says, then all of the virgins, every one of them got up to put their lamps in order and they trimmed, there's that trimming word again, they trimmed and they added oil to them. But you know the story, it says that five of them, uh, they didn't have the oil. So there's gonna be two types of churches, listen to me, over the next five years, and in particular this year. Prophetic word, I'm not just preaching this sermon right now, this is a word from God to our church, and really churches across the world. There'll be people who are casual Christians, who say, I'm gonna put my head in the sand, and. I think this is going to pass. And then there'll be other people who are close to God and they're going to say, God, I'm going to sit down in the chair. I'm going to allow you to trim me and whatever you want to trim out of my life, trim it out of my life because I want more fruit to be produced. Come on, somebody shout amen. And I want lasting fruit that remains. Because like the guy who texted me a moment ago in prison, he was one of the most successful guys in St. Louis. His businesses are still all over this town. But you can still have all the money and try to run your business but be in prison. But I don't care how much money you've got, when you're in the six by nine, you can't sing, have yourself a merry little Christmas. You're just wondering, when am I ever gonna live my life again? I just heard the Holy Spirit say that a lot of you are in prison right now. You're in a prison in your mind. You're in a prison of fear. You're in a prison where the media, communism, terrorism, Marxism, and socialism is trying to suppress you and let you think that things are ending when it's only just begun. God said there's going to be five foolish and five wise. I want word people to say, this is my year. I'm taking my life back. I'm going to enjoy my life, and I'm not going to let the devil's know compared to God's yes and allow the Holy Spirit of God to trim you and cut you. Somebody ought to give God praise wherever he wants to cut you so you will not be at the hand now of a government. We got to trim our own wicks. We have to get our own oil. What does that mean? It means that we need to talk to the Holy Spirit and allow the Holy Spirit to talk to us. Now, here's what he's saying to you, and I want us to go there. To, here's the main crux of the text. I was just warming up on the other stuff. Exodus chapter 9. It says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Aren't you glad that God speaks to men of God? Go to Pharaoh, Pharaoh is their modern day government, and tell them, Thus says the Lord God of the Hebrews, Let my people go. Everybody shout that. Let my people go. That's my favorite verse when my daddy would preach for two hours. I would be in the back going, let my people go. <laughs> my dad preached so long, you needed a haircut in the middle of that sermon. <laughs> let my people go that serve me. And if you're free to let them go and still hold them, behold, the hand of the Lord will be upon your cattle. The Lord spoke to me, that's their money. And the field, which is their land or their legacy, their investment, their horses, their donkeys, and their camels, and their oxen, and their sheep. A very severe pestilence. That would could sound like corona. It could sound like back then we had 10 plagues. And there was frogs on one side of the road. And in the land of Goshen, there was no frogs. There was hail fire coming out of the clouds. And I guess to picture, picture this better, uh, preaching primarily to America, but globally, you've seen a map of America. So picture America is 
this land that we're speaking of right now. And there was inside the land, a city called Goshen. And this city of Goshen, they were exempt from all the plagues and the terror that was coming on the people of the world. The people that were under the government regime, the people that were under uh, the, the devil's rule. Because we know the devil comes to do what? To steal, kill, and to destroy. Come on, even in the overflow, shout it, why? To steal, kill, and destroy. So there was judgment. God said there's gonna be judgment, pay attention to this, in the world, but it's not going to affect the people of God. And the next verse goes on, it says, after this severe pestilence, verse four, and the Lord will make a difference between the livestock of Israel and the livestock of Egypt. There will be a difference. I want you to shout that with me. There will be a difference. There will be a difference. You're different, you're different, you're different. There's something different about you than them. There's something different about the people of the world and the people of the world. There's something different, something, something different about them. Something different. I'm gonna shout it again. Something different, different, different. I was praying last night on my roof at my house in Florida. We've been preaching there on Tuesday night. And I got up on my roof and I started praying last night and I started thinking about this word. And I said, God, and I just kept hearing the Lord say, something different, 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 different. And I was just praying, going, something different about me, something different about my church. Something different about my family. Something different about my preacher. There's something different about, there's something different on the inside of me than what's on the inside of them. The Bible says there's more with us than with them. When Gideon, somebody ought to shout amen. When Gideon went down to the water, he said the people that are foolish, let those people go. Because they're going to go, I'm so thirsty. He said, send them home. Thousands of them went home. He says the ones that dip like this, got a sword of the spirit in this hand and they got the little dipper in this hand. He said, those are the people that you want on the team. In other words, those are the people that made the cut. Those are the people that said, there's a difference between us and them. We are in the midst of a plague, but we are not plagued by the plague because we have a promise from God that said with long life, he would satisfy me and show me his salvation. No weapon formed against me. Well, who's gonna go with me at 21? At the end of 21, you're gonna look back and say, There's a difference. There's a difference. Hey, Don, run here real quick. How old's your daddy? My dad's 74. Come here. His daddy got a bad case of the corona. And they called and said his heart rate was dropping. And they said he wasn't doing too good. And he called me a few days ago and we started praying. But his dad doesn't even go to this church, but he's an old school. Holy Ghost word, dude. And he said he got skin so strong and so cocky. And he started telling everybody, you're going to live and not die. And you're going to live and not die. He's on all kinds of machines. They said uh, a couple days ago, we got to get you out of the hospital because you're bad for the community. Because he was bringing love, joy, peace, long suffering. Come on, somebody else. I said he's different. He's different. You put the wrong guy in that hospital because he brought fire. Because he got his oil filled and he allowed God to trim him. I tell you to praise God for the next 10 seconds. I'm different, I'm different, I'm different, I'm different, I'm different. Ain't nothing normal about you. Verse four again, and it said, the Lord will make a difference. Who's gonna do it? The Lord will make up a difference between the livestock of Israel and the livestock of Egypt. So nothing shall die that belongs to the children of God. Small businesses are being terrorized right now by the United States of America and they're dying all over the streets of America. And big stores and big conglomerates are taking over through some system that is designed to put pockets filled that aren't so good. But there are people at our church that have little small businesses. You got that text? I got a screenshot on, uh, from a person who DM'd me. I think I sent it to him. And this says, this person here, 
said in 2019, their totals were $250,000 and their totals in 2020 were $1.9 million. Can you say? Oh, that's cute. I'd preach tonight if I had somebody that would get up and say, it's my banner year, it's my jubilee. I'm ready for the cut, God. There's a difference, there's a difference, there's a difference. There's a difference, there's a difference, there's a difference. There's a difference. Shout it, there's a difference. So nothing shall die of all that belongs to the children of God. Then the Lord appointed at a set time Set time. I wish I could preach there for an hour. I wish I was like Brother Copeland and y'all had stayed for two hours, but you won't. <laughs> there's a set time. You want it now, but there's a set time. There's a set time. None of this took God by surprise. I'm gonna shout it again. None of this took God. God didn't get up and go, "Uh uh-oh, what am I going to do now? 2021 is your set time. Everybody shout it, set time. time. He said, tomorrow the Lord will do this thing. When I read that a couple days ago, tomorrow, I thought, when is tomorrow? Next verse says, so the Lord did this thing on the next day. (laughs) I love it. It's called a quick work. I said, it's a quick day. It's a quick work. When you do the math on what you just saw to 1.9 million, that'd be a quick workout. All the livestock of Egypt died. America is in trouble. I want to put up a screenshot on Instagram that came up today and I just screenshotted it about a bunch of babies that we killed this year. Corona pales in comparison to that. What killed more people this year, the Rona or abortion? Abortion is the legal, uh, the leading global cause of death in 2020. Guys, we killed 42.7 million babies. I got a little baby sitting at home right now in my house that I can't wait to see. The lost and Schuler, baby bishop, his little hands. His little nose, his little eyes. And when he came out of there, and I thought this is called a full-term abortion right then in the United States of America. It's legal to pull that baby out and to kill him right there on the table. Right here in this country. I know nobody likes to talk about it and I never talk about it. I bring happy Jesus make you laugh, tell you boo jokes, make you feel good. But every once in a while, you need to understand that in 2020, we killed 42 million people. And you know who doesn't like that? The guy that is in heaven manufacturing the babies. And then we pull them out by the womb and we suck them out and even put them in the vaccines that they're injecting in your arms right now. There's coming a day when the cows will die in Egypt. It's coming a day in America, and it's here, where we're all masked up and locked down unless you're in Florida. Apparently, it's get Florida. <laughs> Mask up, locked down, living in fear, destroying and killing small businesses. It's a set time. We say, why aren't you depressed? Because in the land of Goshen, that stuff bypasses you. There's a difference between the world and the word. There's a difference between regular church people and arabashakatoro wohosotobababata. Hey! Come on, somebody ought to give it. I'm preaching better this weekend than you are. I can't even bring it all to you. I'm just playing with you guys. You can't even handle the truth. You can't even, you ain't even ready for what I got. There's a difference. Everybody shout, there's a difference. Shout it again, there's a difference. There's a difference between the livestock of Israel and the livestock of Egypt. So nothing shall die that belongs to the children of Israel. Your business won't die. Your clients won't die. Your dream won't die. The only thing that's going to die is whatever God cuts. 
I hope you make the cut. I hope you do. Not everybody on my staff is going to make the cut. Not everybody in my church is going to make the cut. Not every preacher is going to make the cut. I'm just praying I make the cut. But you got to let God trim you. I don't think I want to go to church. You will when you're in prison. I got to love to go. He'd be here this weekend, I promise you. But I can also promise you this that I know about this guy. If he got out in three months, he'd be back at the racetrack. Because his kid's so fast. He's such a winner. If God blessed you, would you flip him off? I'm going to ask you a question. If God blessed you, would you be at the lake? If God blessed you, would you have to go to Tahiti? If God, oh God, geez, there's, there's the test of success and the test of failure. Wow. And the United States of America has failed the test of success. Wow. Now God sends Indians and Africans to evangelize this godless nation called the United States of America. I'm preaching prophetically, not pathetically tonight, but I'm telling you, there needs to be a remnant that rises up and say, I'm going to go to church. I'm going to take the cut. I'm going to worship God. Uh, I'm going to fast. I'm going to pray. Somebody ought to help me today. I'm not here. I'm not. I, if Corona did one thing for me, it did this. I don't care if you show up. Because you didn't, and the church went on. Freed me from whether you're here or not. Don't care. Preach in Florida. Don't care. Preach in my house. Don't care. Preach on Facebook. Don't care. I got the preach in me. I said, I got the preach in me. I'm ready to preach to America. I'm ready to preach to the world. A message of hope. A message of faith. If God prays, this is the first weekend of 21. There's a difference, there's a difference, there's a difference. Shout, there's a difference. Listen to me. So the Lord did this thing on the next day. It was a quick work, and the livestock of Egypt died. But the livestock of the children of Israel are faith. Not one died. Then Pharaoh sent the news media out. Because he heard something different about the faith people. Something different about those people. So they sent the media out. Look at it. It says, so Pharaoh, it's the government of the day. Pharaoh sent out, and indeed, not even one of the livestock of Israel is dead. But the heart of Pharaoh become, became hard, and he did not let the people go. Now, verse 21. It says, verse 20. He who feared, that word means respect, not, not afraid. He who respected the word of the Lord, Florida, among the servants of Pharaoh, made his servants and his livestock flee to their houses. In other words, this was a government lockdown from heaven. So they're locked in their houses now. So they, they, they respected the Lord and they were on a lockdown. They fled to their houses. But he who did not regard the word of the Lord left his servants and livestock in the field. Now, that's a bad place to be when hail is dropping. Because, oh, that's how their camels died. That's how their donkeys died. That's how their servants died. That's how their crops, which represented stores, represented restaurants, their food was all gone because judgment came. Nobody likes to talk about judgment today. I don't like to talk about judgment. But when you kill 42 million babies in one year, God doesn't like that. Now, a lot of my radical grace preachers, and I believe in grace. I'm the original guy that built this church on. We're not pointing the finger to this way. We're pointing the finger to this way. Put a ring on your finger. Rub on your back. Guys, I'm mad at you. Mad about you. Built one of the biggest churches in America. How'd you do that? Because I believe in radical grace, but I also believe with every coin, there's a heads and a tails. There's a privilege and a responsibility. So because we, and I don't even like to use we because it's not we, it's them. Them went away from God. Yeah. And when them went away with God, away from God, said, I don't have to go to church. I don't believe in that. We're going to do what we want. We'll be what we want. And we'll use the bathroom where we want. And we'll say what we want. God created this way, but we'll be that way. And we'll do whatever we want. Then what you're doing is you're taking the nation and you're taking it into a S Sodom and Gomorrah error instead of saying I'm going to sit in the chair and whatever the book says even though that will be illegal soon on socialism social media 
Even though that'll be illegal and it'll be called a hate crime soon. Put me in jail, but I want to go to jail with a Bible in my hand. It was written, the book was written in prison. Somebody ought to shout amen to this right now. I said the book, two thirds of that book was written in prison because God had a man of God who said, I'll be in prison, but at midnight. started shaking and the prisoners started coming up. I prophesy to you that people are going to want to come to church because they're going to get tired of socialism. Socialism distancing. They're going to get tired of socialism media. And you won't be able to hear me at some point except on your app. That's why you need to go buy that and go get that app. It's free. But get me on the app because I won't be on soon. Because sermons like this are not popular with Pharaoh. They're not popular with the world system, but they are popular with God. I see some of you not clapping. I see some of you not getting in. I'll tell you, you're at the wrong church. Bye, Felicia. I see you. We want to be you. You need to sit down. Shut up. Let God trip it. This is his book, not me. I don't get off on yelling at you. I can truly care less. My life's great. My life's so good. I want to live to 150. I'm afraid of dying because it's so dead. I'm good. You thinking about suicide. Mm -mm -mm -mm. They had no regard for God. And then Moses, then the Lord said to Moses in verse 22, stretch out your hand toward heaven. Watch God give a man power. Let a man of God stretch out his hand toward heaven and there will be hail in the land of Egypt. On man, on beast, on every herb in the field throughout the land of Egypt. And Moses stretched out his rod toward heaven and the Lord sent thunder and hail and fire darted from heaven. This is not a fairy tale, this is true. And the Lord rained down hail in the land of Egypt. And that the hail was mingled with fire. There was none like it in the land in Egypt since it became a nation. Verse 25, and the hail struck throughout the whole land of Egypt. All that was in the field, both man and beast, and hail struck every herb in the field, and it broke every tree of the field, but only in the land of Goshen, where the children of Israel were, there was no hail. I wanted to put up the slide that shows the difference. Florida will be familiar. No, the other, the, the hail. There's rain on one side of the street, and no rain on the other. On one side of the street, you see over here, there's hail, thunder. Florida knows this. It's kind of bipolar down there. There'll be sunshine on the left, rain and on the right. The Lord showed me this, and he said, we're different. Godly, worldly. Israel. Egypt, blessed, cursed, same country, overflow, lack, life, death, unity, strife, optimistic, pessimistic, faith, fear, liberty, communism, freedom, socialism, optimism, or cynicism. There is a difference in these two lands. Come on, give God praise today. In the land of Goshen, in the land of Goshen. Let's go. Shout it, there's a difference. You gotta shout it like I'm preaching it. There's a difference. You gotta get bold like that. I hope that devil doesn't come to my house. I sure wish I had a better life. You come to my house when you're not supposed to be there. I've had people come in and bug us, and I don't say, I sure wish you would leave. I go, click, click. I'm gonna kill you. They come in and try to abduct my daughter have to go to prison because they're sexual predators. I've had it happen in my own home many times. But I didn't say, oh, I hope you leave my daughter alone. No, I'll come at you like a bad rash. I'm coming at you like a spider monkey. And I ain't got big arms, but I got big guns. So I'm just coming saying what I gotta say. So I'm telling you in 2021, if you wanna be a pushover, be a pushover. But if you wanna be an optimist, come out of the cave and say, I'm coming out blessed. I'm coming out favored. I'm coming out healed. 
I'm coming out of knowing it. There's a difference. There's a difference. There's a difference at home. There's a difference in your business. There's a difference in your marriage. There's a difference in your church. There's a difference in your prayer life. There is a difference. There's a difference. There's a difference. There's a difference. There's a difference. Come on, you gotta clap like you mean it right now. That's how you vote. That's, how, that's the problem in America. Somebody gotta shout, there's a difference! Mm. I feel good, I feel good. I didn't even have no organ last night in my house. But about midnight, I got on the roof and I started saying, there's a difference. 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 I live next door to one of the biggest social media tycoons in the world. He's my neighbor. We make movies about him. Jefferson Timberlake played him. And I looked over at his house when I, my house is higher than his house. And I was looking down. I said, there's a difference. There's a difference. There's a difference. There's a difference. That's some of y'all looking like, wah, 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 wah. I'm just telling you, I'm not afraid of Facebook because I got Facebook. I'm not afraid of socialism because I got freedom. I'm not afraid of the law of the land because there is a king who is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And some of you right now are living underneath a, a blanket and you don't know. You don't know what you don't know. But I know. Shout, there's a difference. <laughs> Only in the land of Goshen were the children of Israel. There was no hail. I didn't even look at the time. We're five minutes over. Tomorrow I got to whittle this down because I got an hour left. Only in the land of Goshen where the children of Israel were, there was no hail. Florida, listen to me. Last place I want to go. It's not the last place I want to go, but it's the last place I will be able to go. I was praying this week and the Lord spoke to me. And he said, uh, you might want to study out where the law first mention is about the land of Goshen. If you know anything about Bibles at all, if you're a, even a little bit of a Bible student, you know what the law first mention. The law first mention means where it was mentioned first, you go back and that's where the first account was and there's the legal fact there to fight whatever you need to fight. So I went back and found out where the first legal mention was of the land of Goshen. And first of all, it was found in Genesis 45 and there is an underlying statement there. Verse five says, but now do not therefore be grieved. This is Joseph talking to his brothers in famine. Don't be grieved or angry. Everybody shout, don't be, don't be grieved. He tells him, don't be angry because you sold me, you sold me out for God sent me before you to preserve your life. For these two years of famine that have been in the land, there's still five, which freaked me out because of what the Lord told me. I said, oh my God, five, everybody shout five. five. He said, there's still five years in which there will neither be plowing nor harvesting. And the Lord spoke, spoke to me and said, that is what is going to happen in small businesses in America. They're shutting them down. No plowing, no harvesting. But there's a difference. There's a difference. There's a difference between people of faith and what America can do to you. Some of y'all still look really shocked because let me pause just for a minute. Because while I'm preaching, I feel like a lot of people have been under a rock. Or a lot of people uh, don't really know what's going on. I think, is that Bridget? Bridget. Bridget. I don't even know Bridget's last name. All I know is Bridget goes to our church. And I went to a big stadium one time. It was full of people because I got invited to go. And it was a big, big concert with these famous people. And I said, who put this on? Who, got, who invited me? And so Bridget comes up. And Bridget comes up and she was running the whole thing. And I, Bridget said, I go to our city. And I always think, yeah, do you really? because it's a big church and I don't know. And then she started quoting me and talking about, yeah, I didn't mean it. Yes, I did. And she passed the test. I don't know if Bridget really goes to church. <laughs> and then come to find out, I said, what's this all about? And they said that Bridget got a team together that did what needed to be done. And I don't even pay attention. Did it, did it totally get outlawed in, in Missouri? What happened? Just yell. She shut down abortion in Missouri. Bridget. Bridget. Come on, somebody else shout it. Bridget, 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 right there, Bridget, 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 come here, come here, Bridget. Bridget, come here, I want Florida to see you. Bring Bridget up. Come here, just stand here for one second.
excited. Come on, give it up for Bridget. I want Florida to see people up there in I just looked out and saw Bridget. So, so here's what I felt. Here's, here's what I felt when I was preaching just now. I'm not preaching a sermon. I got a word from God. And sometimes when I'm preaching, I look out and you take me off. Because you look like, I don't know if I believe that. And I don't know if I believe this. In other words, I'm trimming your hair and you keep jerking your head around. And that's why you look so goofy with your bowl cut. If you just sit down and listen like Bridget and say, you know what? I think I will be the one to shut down a boy in America. And you know who loves? Somebody ought to shout amen. Bridget, give it to me one more time. Come on, give it up for Bridget. That's Bridget. Come on, somebody ought to. I want somebody to go crazy for about 10 seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six, five. Somebody ought to shout out of here. We're different. We're different. We're different. We're different. If we're playing like we're cutting your hair, I quit. I don't like to play house. I like to have real house. I don't want to play kissing. I want to kiss. Somebody ought to help me out. I don't want to play church. I want to have church. In fact, we are the church. Shout, there's a difference. There's a difference. There's a difference. Shout it again. What? Shout it again. What? It's different. Verse 7. And God sent me before you to pre- preserve you in your pros- posterity. For you and the earth will save lives by a great deliverance. So God sent me here. Joseph is thinking right now while his brother's looking at him and they betrayed him and sold him out. And they didn't know what the heck was going on. And the person who would deliver them, they, he, they actually cursed him. He sent me here to be a father to Pharaoh, the Lord of all his house, and the ruler throughout the land of Egypt, which is today, we could say, represents America. Hurry, he says, and go get my father and say to him, thus says your son, Joseph, God has made me Lord of all of Egypt. Come down to me. Don't tarry. You will land and live and dwell in the land of Goshen. You will be near to me and to your children and your children's children and your flocks and your herds and all that you have. There, verse 11, I'm almost done. There I will provide for you. I will provide for you. This is Joseph talking to his dad, but this is Jesus talking to Joseph. This is Jesus talking to his church. This is Jesus talking to Faith Church. I will provide for you because there is a difference. Come on, somebody ought to give God praise. It's a long sermon, but I couldn't get this out quick. It's like having a baby. You think you're going to have it seven hours later in two epidurals. It's halfway out. I heard the Lord say to go back to verse nine. I feel so bad because of time, but I heard the Lord speak to me and say, you can't rush this. So it is what it is. I'm sorry. I apologize. I don't know how in the world I will pull this off tomorrow in a multi-service situation, but maybe I'll just play it all day long because... I, don't, I can't even pre. I wouldn't even be able to talk after yelling this much. We'll see. Lord told me to go back at verse 9. He said, don't rush that. Hurry and go up to my father. And say to him, thus says your son Joseph, God made me Lord of all. Come down to me. Do not tarry. Do not tarry. I promise you, I just heard the Lord as sure as I've ever heard him. Do not tarry. Earth City Campus, we were on the parking lot one day and I didn't know if I could sign my name to all those millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars or not. And I was on the parking lot and I heard the Lord say the words, expedite. I was looking for Nicole's verification, but she's studying right now. Everybody shout expedite. expedite. If I had to expedite it, we wouldn't have that church because I had to do it now. 
And it's the same voice that I heard at the right hand corner, if you're sitting in our city in the plate, you know, at the front door and you look out, it's the furthest corner on the right side of the building there in that, that parking lot. That's where the Lord told me expedite. And the same voice that I heard then, I just, I just heard now. And he said, do not tarry. Don't put off till tomorrow what you can do today. I'm gonna pray, I'm gonna pray later. No, 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 today. I'm gonna go to church like, no, 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 today. I'm gonna get that right later. No, today, don't tarry. It's not a time to tarry. It's a time to sit down, put the apron on and let God come at you. You're gonna hear about me and Nicole, come here Nicole. You're gonna hear about us probably all the time. It's not something new. I know how long we've been going to bad places because I look at Ashton when she was born 17 years ago is about the time we started hanging out with bad people. And we grew the church out of bad people because it was just organic. It wasn't religious people because we didn't even find, we were growing so fast, we didn't even want the religious people there. We were always making them mad. Sometimes I'd cuss in church just to make them mad, make them leave, just because I needed their seat. Because I was going after the people that were on their way to hell and I wanted to point them to heaven. So I just want to recalibrate our vision in 21. We want to get out there, like Nicole just said, in the highways and byways and compel them to come in. So every church service that you don't go to, I know it's wrong because you're not there. And I know it's really wrong because you didn't bring somebody. If it's just a bless me club, please leave. Please allow God to make a difference between you and the regular Christians. And I know this is a rough word. But you need to have a rough word every once in a while. I want everybody to stand up with me. Come on, Florida, stand up. Even at home, in reverence to God right now, if you're watching online, I want you to stand up in your home. And I, I, I don't know what to tell you, except you can't go wrong trusting God. But you can go wrong listening to a communistic system that is recalibrating, if you read the Bible, you're recalibrating a one world order. You're sitting smack dab in the middle of Bible prophecy. It would take me way more time than I took tonight and I'm 20 minutes over time right now, if you're taking medicine. (laughs) But I, I will say, It's no time to jack around. If you're headed the wrong way, I'm begging you to turn around. I remember when my brother is a drug addict, strung out tonight. He's homeless in Arizona. I remember the day when he was leaving the ministry and he walked out of this two-story office complex that we just bought. He said, I can make a living anywhere. He wouldn't submit. My daddy had died and he had a lot of excuses why. I said, please don't leave. Please don't go. I'm begging you, I'm begging you to turn around. And he basically flipped me off and went. And now he's living the life. Not, not because he turned his back on me. I just knew when you turn around, when you turn away from Jesus, because you think you've got enough money and like, trust me, your money doesn't impress me. I've seen money and you, you don't, Missouri doesn't have any. <laughs> I'm here to tell you right now that the only thing that's gonna make you happy, we had dinner a couple nights ago with the people that have the biggest house in America, 90,000 square feet and they're miserable. I've seen also people that were rich that had Jesus and they had it all. If you can have your cake and eat it too, then do that. Preferably why you have teeth to chew it. (laughs) But at the end of the day, I want to ask you right now, here online, every head bowed and every eye closed in the overflow in the chapel. I'm asking you to do two things. Look at me just for a second. I'm asking you to go on a fast with me come Monday morning for 21 days. I'm not saying you don't have to eat anything. You figure out what, what it is. The Daniel fast for you. Some of you, it's fasting 
you know, not, all, all whole sweets or coffee or whatever, but it doesn't need to be just, oh, this doesn't cost me anything. Make it hurt. But for come Monday for 21 days, I'm gonna be on Facebook every day, praying with you at 7 a.m. And we're gonna pray for 21 days. And we're gonna recalibrate you. Because at the end of 21, you're not gonna look back and say, I won in 21 if you keep doing what you've done. Listening to the liberal line media, listening to the system, listening to communism, Marxism, socialism, you gotta sit down and get your hair cut at church. And some of you might think these are political statements. It is not political statements. It is history, history in the making. All you have to do is travel to Venezuela, go to Cuba, where when we take high God in, we have to sneak it around in a communist country. I've been there. And anytime you take God out of school and you put condoms in, you get shootings and catastrophe. And any time you take God out of a government, you got issues. But whatever you do, we're the people. We're not people who just go to church. I'm not playing church. And I don't want to build a church or play. If, you, if we're playing church, I quit. No, I don't play games, do I? You know, like our family, like they all get mad at me this week. Our family was around and they just know I don't play games. I don't play games. I hate games. I don't, it's a waste of my time. I don't play games. So even in real life, I don't play games. If we're fighting, I'm gonna to try to kill you. And if we're, if we're playing a game, I'm gonna to try to beat you. If that means I gotta start printing Monopoly money under the table, we gonna win. So I'm here to tell you as your pastor, I'm not playing games. I wanna coach you through the most difficult leadership time of your life. But at the end of 21, you'll have the same documentation that woman does at the Well and Spring campus to say, I was here and I went here. In the midst of famine, there was a difference. In the midst of trial, there was a difference. In the midst of communism, there was a difference. In the midst of stealing, there was a difference. In the midst of everything that's godless. If you know anything about me, you know I'm not a closed line preacher. I love all people. I love all sinners. But we can't say it's okay. I gotta say that I'm a sinner and you're a sinner. God loves sinners, but he hates the sin. So for the next 21 days, every head bowed and eye closed, I want you at all campuses and online, all you have to do on Facebook is say, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it. Who will go with me starting Monday for 21 days? I'll do it, I'll do it. Come on, raise your hand. On Tuesday night, we're gonna have a Holy Ghost blowout worship night right here. Get here, Tuesday night. Get at the chapel Tuesday night. Stretch your hands toward me. Pray this prayer. Say, dear Heavenly Father, I wanna live in the land of Goshen. I'm gonna stay seated for my trimming. And I'll allow you to cut me, God, wherever you need to cut me. Use me, Lord. And God, we pray right now for the United States of America and for people around the world. We ask you, Lord, for mercy. But God, we know that this church is different. We can be in the middle of Egypt, hail on one side and no hail on this side. Famine on one side, blessing on the other side. There's a difference, there's a difference, there's a difference. Every time I see the stats of sickness and disease, I'll look at my family and I'll say, there's a difference. There's a difference. God, I pray right now, blessing and favor over every man, every woman, every boy and every girl. Every person who calls me their pastor, Lord, right now, I release a special blessing on this first weekend of this fabulous year. People of the enemy say it's going to be a dark, dark, suppressed, horrible time. We don't buy into that. We believe in God is getting ready to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we could ever ask, think, or imagine, according to the power that works within us. Good times of glory and refreshing. Just because judgment is in the world does not mean It'll be in our house because verse 11 said, you will provide and for us and our household right there for the next five years. No famine, but breakthrough. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen and amen. Come on, give God praise today.